Hello and welcome to another video lecture from MrWatkins.com. This one will be on uh, the very basics of working genetic crosses um, from like word problems. So let's get started here. First of all, genetic crosses. Now here's the thing. How do you run a genetic cross? Well, there's some steps that you need to do. The first step when you're given this word problem or story problem is determine the parent's genotype. Now, a genotype, you should already know what that word is, but just to remind you, that is the two alleles, the alleles that make up that particular gene. So in some cases, like, say, hitchhiker's thumb, someone may be heterozygous, and so they're big H and little h. And so they would have hitchhiker's thumb. That would be their, their phenotype, the expression of these two alleles, but the genotype is those two alleles. The second thing you then need to do when you read through the problem is determine, um, once you have the parent's genotype, is determine the uh, alleles that would be in each of the gametes. In other words, you need, to, you need to figure out what all the different possible gametes are that that parent could make. Okay, And then the third thing that you do at the end um, is you do the cross. Um, sometimes you can use a Punnett square. Sometimes you can just reason through and look at it, but you need to make sure that the gametes from one parent, um, all the possible combinations go with the uh, other parent, all those possible combinations. Genetics crosses, what we're doing has to do with the um, probability, the the chance that an offspring will occur if these two individuals, these organisms, made it. So let's go through them real quick, and I want to talk more about how we determine the gametes, this piece right here, because this is a piece that if you miss this, in fact, actually, if you miss and you don't get the parents right, you're going to get the problem wrong. And the not getting the parents right, that's a mistake that tends to happen pretty frequently. But the most common mistake happens to do with not being able to determine what the correct gametes are. So let's walk through um, this here real quick. If I had a parent that was big H, little h, and was heterozygous for this, partic for this particular gene, this gene called hitchhiker's thumb, where your, your thumb uh, curves back, I'm homozygous recessive. My thumb does not curve back, and most people are. The header or are uh, have the hitchhiker thumb, and uh, I don't. But this parent, this uh, parent's genotype, there are two possible gametes that can be produced. So, if it was a male, then there would be a sperm that could be produced with just the big H, and then there could be a sperm produced with just the little H. Each one of these sperm has an equal chance of making it to the egg to fertilize. Um, that egg and produce an offspring, but it's random as to which one will actually make it, which one will actually be there. Now, if we had an individual, say, that was uh, big A, little a, and big B, little b, now what we're looking at is not just one gene here, and that's what this is. We're looking at a monohybrid, in a sense. We're now looking at two genes. So now we have two genes here that we're looking at. And we're looking at what's called a dihybrid, and, or a dihybrid cross is what we're actually talking about because dihybrid has a different term. And again, we'll talk about that in a different video. So the confusing part is, is here the gametes, the possible gametes, one would be a big H and the other would be a little h. But here we have two genes. And here's where the confusion comes in. Each gene gives one of its alleles to the egg or the sperm. So this gene would give a big A or a little a. And this gene also would give a big B or a little b at the same time into the same thing because you've got two genes you're looking at here instead of one. So here's, here's the example. So this organism, it, its gametes would have one letter from one gene and one letter from the other gene in each gamete. So it would have its gametes being big A, big B, one from each, big A, little b, again, one from each, okay, little a, big b, 
one from each, little a, little b, one from each. There are four possible gametes here. Here there's only two. Here there are four possible gametes. And it almost looks like that FOIL method for math where you do the first, you know, and then the outer and the inner and however, however your math teacher has told you how to work that. Now I'm going to change to a different piece of paper here because there's kind of a trick to help you make sure that you get the right thing. And so let's take that same big A, little a, big B, little b. Now I want you to notice that for this gene, there are two possibilities. For this gene, there are two possibilities. So if I have two possibilities here and two here, two times two, that's going to be four. And when we did this cross just a moment ago, or not cross, but when we figured out this, these gametes just a moment ago, we had one, two, three, four. This is a way to check yourself to be sure that you are getting the right number of um, gametes or possible combinations. Here's an example. Here's another example. Let's say I had big A, little a, big B, big B, homozygous, big C, little c. What would be the total number of gametes that I could have? Well, if I were to figure this out, I could go through and, and calculate it out, or excuse me, go through and go, okay, big A goes with big B, you know, and big C, because we have three genes here. I should be able to figure out how many gene, how many gametes I would have. Two possibilities here, only one possible gamete that's different here, because whatever this particular gene is, it's always going to be big B. And then there's two here, because that's a big B and a little c. And so that's 2 times 1 is 2 times 2, so I should have 4. Well, let's look at this. I've got big A, big B, big C. I've got big A, big B, and little c. I've got little a, big B, big C. I've got little a, big B, little c. Those are the only four different combinations that these three genes could make. Now, there also is an easier way of of doing this part when you get to the big ones. The small ones where you're just looking at one gene or two genes are not as bad, but when you get to a big one, say something like big A, little a, big B, little b, big D, little d. When you get to something like that, it can be a little harder. And So let me show you how to solve that, and it's how to figure out what the gametes would be for three traits. And let me kind of show you how that works. This, I'm going to rewrite the thing here because I do need a big piece of paper to work on this. Here's my three genes for this particular organism. I want to know how many gametes I'm supposed to have. Well, there's two possibilities here, two here, and two here. I should come out with eight different gametes. Two times two times two. That makes eight. How do I figure it out without going crazy? Well, the first one... The first gene here has a big A and a little a, two possibilities, big A and little a. And each big A could go with a big B, as well as a little b, just like the little a can go with a big B as well as a little b. So I'm making kind of a, a split, a fork, if you will. Now, all both of those could go with a big D or a little d, as well as this little b. All right, so I just made another fork because the big A could go with the big B or it could go with the little B. And then that big B could also go with the big D or the little D. This is called the fork method. And, and I, you may not be able to see this red pin very well, but this red here, if you just follow from the root of the fork forward, you'll actually get the gametes because this is all the possibilities. Big A, big B, little D. Okay, and we're just following the fork through. So big A, little b, big D, big A, little b, little d, and here we go, following this again. Okay, big A, or excuse me, little a, big B, little d, little a, little b, little, uh, excuse me, big D, sorry, one through there, and then little a, little b, and big D. Now, we calculate there should be eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we do have our eight. So I'm pretty confident that we've got the right number of gametes to run through these crosses that we need to do. Okay, so 
Once we have our gametes, then the next step is going to be putting it into the Punnett square and or otherwise coming up with the combinations. So let's look here real quick and see how we can do that. Let's say that my cross is between a heterozygote that has hitchhiker's thumb and they're mated with a homozygous recessive that doesn't have hitchhiker's thumb. Quite honestly, you should be able to look at that and go, it's going to be a 50% chance that the offspring of these two are going to have hitchhiker's thumb and a 50% chance where they're not. And the reason why you should get to the point where you could do this is just because it should be so second nature to you that you can actually see it in your head. This organism can only give two types of gametes, one that's got a big H and one that's got a little h. This organism can only give one type of gamete, it's the little h. And since that's the case, basically half the time on this side is the only thing that's going to be given um, the change in that organism. So I'll show you what I mean. The gametes, step two, determine the gametes, that's going to be a big H and a little h here, and over here it's going to be a little h. If we were to put it in the Punnett square, I usually put, it's by convention, we usually put the big H, the, excuse me, the organism that's on the left tends to make the rows, and the organism that's on the right tends to make the columns. There's no real rule, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So what I've done then is I basically just plug this into a box, a system that allows me to basically combine all the possible combinations if these two met. Here, let me move that up so I didn't realize it's so low. So the big H and the little h come together. Here we've got a little h from this one and a little h here. Now here's the thing, this organism right here is going to have hitchhiker's thumb. This one's going to have, it's going to have no hitchhiker's thumb. Of the two possibilities, one of those has hitchhiker's thumb. So half the time, or 50% chance, if these two mated, they would, their offspring would have, 50, uh, would have hitchhiker's thumb. Half the time, or 50% chance, their offspring could have, uh, would not have hitchhiker's thumb. This is very basic how it works. Now, there are some other things, and I'm going to be doing, there are other videos that you'll be able to see and you can watch that will go into very specific types of crosses. And just work the cross straight out. should be very short videos for you to see. This is the overall thing. If you follow these three steps, chances are you're going to get it right. Pay attention to the gametes that you're trying to get. And if you can't get those gametes correct, it doesn't matter what else after you do after this step, it's going to be wrong. Have a good evening. Thank you.